Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to the Photo Show. In today's episode, we're going to look at scanning negatives. Remember, if you like what you see on the Photo Show, please comment, like and subscribe in the boxes below. Let's get on and scan some negs. My history in photography goes back way over 30 years. I started using an SLR when I was about 10 years old. And as a result of that, I've got thousands and thousands of these. Negative bags full of images that I shot on film over the years. Now these are just sitting in my loft at the moment, wasting away. And what I wanted to do was go through them and pick out images that I wanted to archive by scanning them into the computer. By scanning the images into the computer, I can not only work on them in Photoshop, but if I want to, I can print out larger size images. Because the file sizes you can scan in, you can actually print out larger size images than you could in a, in a traditional darkroom. So let's have a look at the process of scanning the negative into the computer. Right, looking through some negatives, and I found this from about 30 odd years ago when I was about 15 years old. It's some friends at school. It's shot on Kodak Tri-X film, which was 400 ISO, black and white negative film. And uh, what I'd like to do is scan this into the computer so that I can either make prints of it or just have it as an archive just in case anything happens to the negs in the future. So let's have a look and get on scanning it into the computer so we can start to have a look at it and working on it. Okay, so we've chosen the negative and now we've got the holder that goes into the scanner. This one uh, takes two, you can either put 35mm um, negative strips in the top here or it will take slides in their mounts in the one in the bottom. We want to look at the one at the top. So we take this apart, this top bit comes open like this. And now we need to slide the negative into this section here. So let's get the negative. And it has to go upside down and back to front. So it goes under the little clips there and sits back in to the holder like that. So now we've got the negative in there. We'll put the top bit back on top just to hold it nice and steady. Pop the clips down. And there, now we've got our negative in the holder, upside down and back to front. And next we're going to move on to putting this into the scanner so we can prepare to scan it and get it into the computer. Okay, we've got the scanner here. This is an older uh, Epson 4490 photo. And the reason we're using this is because not only is it a flatbed scanner, I don't know if you can see, but in the lid as well, it has a separate uh, light source that allows you to scan negatives, transparencies, and film. It will shine the light through it. This will actually do, as well as 35mm film, it will do medium format as well. So we've got our 35mm film in the holder. Um, it has specific tabs around the side of it, which correlate to parts of the scanner as well. And for what we're doing, it's tab A into slot A, which is there. So we set that down, that's now set on the flatbed scanner. The light source is directly above where the negative is. So it scans through it to um, get the image into the computer. So let's shut the scanner down. And now we'll move on to the computer to carry on the scanning. Okay, so now we're on the computer. Let's open up the Epson scan software. We've got two scanners in, so we're gonna pick the one that we've got the in, which is the Perfection 4490. And that should then open up the software so we can begin the scanning. You can hear the scanner now starting up because the software has started. Okay, so now we've got the software open for the scanner. I've got it set in professional mode so that we've got some uh, more options of how we scan it. First off, we've got here document type and we've got reflective, which would be ordinary flatbed scanning, or we're going to choose film because obviously we're scanning film. Then we've got film type. And you can choose from positive, which is your transparency, color negative. We need black and white film, so we're going to pick that as well. Um, we've got a few choices here. We're going to do the image as a 16-bit gray scale, so that we've got plenty of uh, information to work with. I've put the resolution up to its almost its maximum amount. I'll put it up to 4800 DPI, which is going to give us a nice big size image. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to click Preview. And the scanner will now start up. 
and scan the strip of negatives that we've got in there and give us a preview thumbnail of all of the five shots that are on that strip of negatives. So there we are, it's scanned the strip of negatives and it's pulled us up thumbnails of all five of the images that are on uh, the strip that we have. We only want to look at this one, so let's uncheck all of the others. Just leaving this one ticked. We can also have a look at a full size image of it there. So this is the one that we want to scan. So we go back to the thumbnail. Check that's the only one checked there. Check all our settings there, I'm happy with that. And now we click scan and let the scanner begin to work its way through scanning that one image. I'm going to call this what I call the image so we can find it later. I believe this was shot in 83 so I'll put the year as well and click OK. Now the scanner is warming up it's going to begin to scan the image and it should give us an amount of time it's going to take to scan this one frame off of this uh, strip of 35mm negatives. And as you can see here, it's going to say time remaining three minutes. So it's going to take three minutes to scan that one particular negative. So we'll, we'll let that get on and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so as you can see there, it's finished doing the scan now. So let's have a look at the image we've scanned. Let's get it up into Photoshop. So let's open Photoshop up. So now we're in Photoshop. Let's open up the image that we just scanned in. Let's find the file for that. So open, scan negatives, and run down to where I named it. And that should be the one that we're looking for. So let's open that up. That up. So there we have it. There's the scan from the negative. Um, it's showing it as a 27.1 uh, megabit file, but remember this is a grayscale file, so it shows us a lot smaller size. This will give us massive room to play with and use as print. Let's bring this full screen. As you can see, there's areas that's got dust on it, some scratches where the negs have been uh, moved around over the last 30 years. But these are all the kind of things that you can fix in Photoshop and uh, archive the image. So. I'll probably do some work on the image and we'll show it at the end. Okay, so that's how you scan negatives into the computer. After a little bit of work on Photoshop, cleaning up some dust marks and some scratches, this is the image I ended up with. I'm really pleased with the way it looks because one, I've now got a fresh version of that image and two, should anything ever happen to the negative, I've got an archive file that I can always go back to and work from. I'm Dave Vickers, thanks for watching, see you next time.